why you should watch this till end nature cannot survive solely in equilibrium diffusion or facilitated diffusions are not enough to supply what is required by cells to carry out essential survival activities it means cells need an efficient system to cope with the demands of transporting against concentration gradients so cells need efficient pumps to transport inside or outside as per need today we shall learn the basics behind such pumps how they aid cells to transport what is need of the r against gradients i am talking about active transports don't go let's start <laughs> what is active transport transport of materials across membranes against concentration gradients with the expenditure of energy is termed as active transport like facilitated diffusion active transport is done through transport proteins commonly called as pumps which only work using atp active transport can be divided into two types primary transport and secondary transport let's explore the mechanism in some more detail primary active transport in 1957 a danish physiologist jens kau discovered an atp hydrolyzing enzyme in crab's nerve cells which later was called the sodium potassium atpase or sodium potassium pump this enzyme is responsible for large number of sodium ions outside and large number of potassium ions inside the cell excess positive charge outside is balanced by chloride ions while inside by negative proteins and nucleic acids transport ratio of sodium and potassium is 3 ratio 2 3 sodium are pumped outside and in response simultaneously two potassium ions are pumped inside sodium potassium pump is a p type ion pump what is p type p for phosphorylation when sodium potassium atpase hydrolyzes atp the released phosphate combine with aspartic acid of atpase itself that's why it is a p type pump now let's understand the mechanism of sodium potassium pump in step 1 atpase shown with yellow color embedded in plasma membrane is open from inside only and this conformation can hold three sodium ions at once let's call this conformation as e1 don't confuse the empty area of gate like the gate of a train in japan where there is always space no matter how much is overcrowded already in second step gate is closed and we can say atpase is occluded which doesn't allow arrested sodium ions to escape back in the third step atp attached is hydrolyzed to adp and phosphate is released which attaches with atpase itself you know p type in the fourth step due to atp conformation changes from e1 to a2 sodium ions are released outside and no gate is open for potassium question arises here that on one side three ions and same protein but two ions from other side the answer may be sizes of ions because potassium ions are bigger than sodium in fifth step potassium entered into the atpase In the sixth, ATPase closes the gate from outside again. In the seventh step, another ATP molecule is hydrolyzed to transform the conformation from E2 to E1 again. And in the last step, release of potassium ions and entry of another three sodium ions to repeat the cycle again. Remember that. two atps are used in one cycle due to consumption of a lots of atps 
This pump is considered very costly and that's why sodium potassium pump is used by animals only. Another pump common to both plants and animals is calcium pump or calcium ATPase which is used to actively transport ions inside and out of endoplasmic reticulum. Now let's talk briefly about secondary or co-transport. Secondary active transport is very interesting and efficient. It mostly don't require ATP because it is the counterbalance of primary active transport. Intestinal epithelial cells have sodium potassium ATPase on basal and lateral sides only. These sides use primary active transport to expel sodium ions outside. When sodium concentration become high outside, sodium ions move inside using ion channels where sodium potassium pumps are not active. In doing so, they also take digested glucose molecules with them. This is called co-transport or secondary active transport.